Okay, so we've done the table. We've done what's inside the table. Now let's go out from the table one and look at this thing that says for each. For each what? For each anything, for any item that has an ID which equals the, let's see, let me, how, how do I explain this? I wanna make sure that I do it in a way that, that, that if you're ready to understand, you can understand, but if you're not ready to understand, you can at least get past this, um, this, this what I'm about to say. So let's go backwards. You see how we're gonna get the ref ID inside of this XPath? The very end of the XPath is the ref ID. We're getting the at ref ID of something. And now let's look at the um, let's look at the schema and notice that an add ref has a ref ID. So what this XPath is going to end up giving us is uh, the the item whose ID matches the ref ID in the add ref. Okay, and I'll 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 blow by for the moment the how this current thing works. Um, I'll talk about that at some other point, and you may or may not hear me talk about that. It's not really that important. What I want you to see here is that it'll select any item. So it's not, this is not particular to trees. If I have five other kinds of items, this add ref will work for any of those kinds of items because it doesn't explicitly say whack whack tree. It says whack whack star. So it'll find any element whose ID equals the ref ID of the add ref that I'm in. So it effectively finds the target of the add ref. The add ref points to something and that, that pointer is in the ref ID. And then this statement for each select whack whack uses that ref ID to find the to find the item that we're trying to create this for. Now, what does that item have to have? It certainly has to have an ID, otherwise the for each wouldn't work. It's going to have to have an image associated with it. It's going to have to have a title associated with it, because those are all the things I'm using to build the ad ref. But to get to the ad ref, all I really to get to the item who's who this is the ad ref for, all I really needed was the ID, and the ID is going to get me to the item. From that ID, I can get all the information I need about the ID. Okay, one other thing that's in here is uh, you'll see that I create a variable called float, and I put, the vari I put the value of the float attribute in that variable. If you've heard about variables before, great. If you haven't, you can simply think of a variable as a placeholder. It's a place to hold that value. I have the at float, and float is going to be right or left, and now I have it in something called float and now I can use it inside the style. So notice it says uh, curly brackets dollar sign float. I'm using the value that I put in that variable. The variable is a container and I access that container by using the dollar sign. I I'm putting it inside of a, of a value of, an XSL value of here because of those curly brackets. Okay, so those are all different steps along the road to getting the float value either to be right or left depending on what you specify. Now let's back up again to the add ref. The add ref allows you to specify a ref ID. That's the ID of the thing I want to create an add ref for. And it allows you to create a float attribute. That float attribute says whether I want it to be left justified or right justified. Nothing more than that. And in fact, it's a, an enumerated list, if you remember what that is, and it has two values, right and left. So that I'm sure that I'm either going to float right or float left. Now, back over to the schema one more time. And now notice that an add ref is inside the block, uh, the block model that has all the other kinds of things that can go in what? In a description. So our add ref is allowed to go in a description right next to the P's and the UL's and the OL's and the BR's and the tables, etc. I've added it to the block model so that it can be used anywhere and it can be in between any two other items inside the description. Okay, so if you look at the examples in the instance here, you'll see a, um, a couple of different examples where we have an add ref floating uh, left, right and an add, ref, left, an add ref floating left. I encourage you to go through these examples in detail. I encourage you to open up all the files that these, that these examples are based on and really think about them um, and get as far as you need to do your particular exercises. So if you're in a more technical track, you may need to go further with understanding this than if you're in a less technical track. And so my message to the more technical track people is you should pretty much be able to understand all of the syntax that's, on that, that's, on, that's in this example. My message to the less technical people, the people who are in a less technical track, is understand the concepts. You won't be really called upon, maybe only by the very end, to even use variables. You're not going to be called upon to use this current thing. 
um, your, your understanding of it should go as far as being able to see the general concepts and not into the actual execution. Okay, the final thing we have on the screen here is the output. And you can see that, that what comes from applying this transform to this instance is all that HTML code that was in the transform and the right things in the image, the right thing in the title, and the right thing in the, um, in the, in the, in the actual link, in that A href. We have the right thing, which is uh, the, uh, uh, we have the right thing, which is the page that we want to jump to, and the, um, uh, and its ID.